Hello, I want to give you a little disclaimer before you start this video. This video is not any lesson or any teaching that I will give you. This video is just a podcast about a chapter in our book. So thank you. If this audio book somehow helped you, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you. Chapter 2 Physical Features of India You have already learned that India is a vast country with varied landforms. What kind of terrain do you live in? If you live in the plains, you are familiar with the vast stretches of plain land. In contrast, if you live in hilly region, the rugged terrain with mountains and valleys are common features. In fact, our country has particularly all major physical features of the earth. Example mountains, plains, deserts, plateaus and islands. The land of India displays great physical variation. Geologically, the peninsular plateau constitutes one of the ancient land masses on the earth's surface. It was supposed to be one of the most stable land blocks. The Himalayans and the northern plains are the most recent landforms. From the viewpoint of geology, Himalayan mountains from an unstable zone. The whole mountain system of Himalaya represents a very youthful topography with high peaks, deep valleys and fast flowing rivers. The northern plains are formed of alluvial deposits. The peninsular plateau is composed of igneous and metamorphic rocks with gently rising hills and wide valleys. Major Physiographic Divisions The physical feature of India can be grouped under the following physiographic division. 1. The Himalayan Mountains 2. The Northern Plains 3. The Peninsular Plateau 4. The Indian Desert 5. The Coastal Plains 6. The Islands The Himalayan Mountains The Himalayas Geologically young and structurally fold mountains stretch over the northern borders of India. These mountain ranges run in a west east direction from the Indus to the Brahmaputra. The Himalayas represent the loftiest and one of the most rugged mountain barriers of the world. They form an arc which covers a distance of about 2400 km. Their width varies from 400 km in Kashmir to 150 km in Arunachal Pradesh. The attitudinal variations are greater in the eastern half than those in the western half. The Himalaya consists of three parallel ranges in its longitudinal constant. A number of valleys is between these ranges. The northernmost range is known as the Great or Inner Himalayas or the Himadri. It is the most peaks with an average height of 6000 meters. It contains all prominent Himalayan peaks. The folds of the Great Himalayas are asymmetrical in nature. The core of this part of Himalaya is composed of granite. It is personally show-bound and a number of glaciers descend from this range. The range lying to the south of the Himadri from the most rugged mountain system and is known as Himachal or Laser Himalaya. The ranges are mainly composed of highly compressed and altered rocks. The altitude varies between 3,700 and 4,500 meters and the average width is 50 km. Well, the Peer Panjal range forms the longest and the most important range and Dhauladhar and the Mahabharata ranges are also prominent ones. This range consists of the famous valley of Kashmir, the Kangra and Kullu valley in Himachal Pradesh. This region is well known for its hill station. The outermost range of the Himalayas is called the Shivaliks. They extend over a width of 10 to 15 km and have an altitude varying between 900 and 1100 meters. These ranges are composed of unconsolidated sediments brought down by rivers from the main Himalayan ranges located further north. These valleys are covered with thick gravel and aluminium. Longitudinal valley lying between Laser Himalaya and the Swivaliks are known as Dern, like Dehradun, Kotlidun and Patlidun are some of the well known Duns. Besides the longitudinal division, the Himalayas have been divided on the basis of region from west to east. This division have been demarcated by river valleys. For example, the part of Himalayas lying between Indus and Satluj has been traditionally known as Punjab Himalaya. But it is also known regionally by Kashmir and Himachal Himalaya from west to east respectively. The part of the Himalayas lying between Satluj and Kali river is known as Kumayan Himalaya. The Kali and Tista rivers demarcate the Nepal Himalayas and the part lying between Tista and Dilhang river is known as Assam Himalayas. There are regional names also in three broad categories. Find out some regional names of Himalayas. The Brahmaputra marks the easternmost boundary of Himalaya beyond the Dihang Gorge. The Himalayas bend sharply to the south and spread over the eastern boundary of India. They are known as the Purvachal or the eastern hills and mountains. These hills running through the northern east states are mostly composed of strong sandstones, which are sedimentary rocks, run as parallel ranges, 
and valleys. The Purvachal comprises the Patkai Hills and Naga Hills and the Manipur Hills and the Mijo Hills. The Northern Plain The Northern Plain has been formed by the interplay of the three major river systems, namely the Indus, the Ganga, the Brahmaputra, along with the tributaries. This plain is formed of alluvial soil. The deposition of alluvium in the vast basin lying at the foothills of the Himalaya over million of years from the fertile plain. It spreads over an area of 7 lakh square kilometer, the plain being about 2400 kilometer long and 240 to 320 kilometer broad. It is a densely populated physiographic division with a rich soil cover combined with adequate water supply and favorable climate. It is agriculturally productive part of India. The rivers coming from northern mountains are involved in depositional work in the lower coast due to gentle slope. The velocity of the river decreases which results in the formation of riverine island. The rivers in their lower course split into numerous channels due to deposition of slate. These channels are known as tributaries. The northern plain is broadly divided into three sections. The western part of the northern plain is referred to as Punjab plains, formed by the Indus and its tributaries. The larger part of this plain lies in Pakistan. The Indus and its tributaries, the Jhelum, the Chenab, the Ravi, the Bias, and the Satluj, originate in the Himalaya. The section of the plain is dominated by the Doabs. The Ganga plain extends between Ghagra and Tista rivers. It is spread over the states of North India, Haryana, Delhi, UP, Bihar, partly Jharkhand and West Bengal, so it is east. Particularly in Assam lies the Brahmaputra plain. The northern plain are generally described to flat land with no variation in its relief. It is not true. These vast plains also have diverse relief features. According to the variation in relief features, the northern plains can be divided into four regions. The rivers after descending from the mountains deposit pebbles in a narrow belt of about 8 to 16 km. In white, lying parallel to the slopes of the Shivaliks. It is known as Bhavar. All the streams disappear in this Bhavar belt, south of this belt. The streams and rivers re emerge and create a wet, swampy, and marshy region known as Tirai. This was a thicky forested region for the wildlife. The forests have been cleared to create agricultural lands and settle migrants from Pakistan after partition. Look at Dudva National Park in this region. The largest part of the northern plain is formed of older alluvium. It lies above the float plains of river and present a terrace like feature. This part is known as Bhangar. The soil in this region contains calcareous deposits known, known as Kakar. The newer, younger deposits of the flood plains are called Khadar. They are renewed almost every year, so are fertile. The ideas of extensive agriculture. The Peninsular Plateau The Peninsular Plateau is a table land composed of the old crystalline igneous and metamorphic rock. It was formed due to the breaking and drifting of the Golwanda land and thus making it a part of the oldest landmass. The plateau has broad and shallow valley and rounded hills. This plateau consists of two broad divisions, namely the Central Highland and the Deccan Plateau. The part of the Peninsular Plateau have lying to the north of the Narmada River, covering a major area of Malwa Plateau. It is known as the Central Highland. The Vindhan range is bounded by the Satputra Ridge on the Arabalis on the northeast. The further westward extension gradually merges with the sandy and rocky desert of Rajasthan. The flow of the river draining the region, namely the Chambal, the Sindh, the Bidwa, the Kane, is from southwest to northeast. The indicating the slope, the central highways are winded in the west but narrowed in the east. The eastward extension of this plateau are locally known as Bundelkhand and Bhagalkhand. The Chotanagar Plateau marks the further eastward extension drained by the Damodar River. The Deccan Plateau is a triangular landmass and that lies to the south of the river Nirmada. The Satpura Range flanks its broad base in the north, while the Mahadev and Kaimur Hills and the Michael Range from the eastern extension. Locate these hills and ranges in physical map of India. The Deccan Plateau is higher in the west and slopes greatly eastwards. An extension of this plateau is also visible in the northeast, locally known as Meghalaya. Karbi, Anglong Plateau and North Kachar Hills is separated by a fault from the Chotanagpur Plateau. This prominent hill ranges from the west to east at the Gado, Khasi and Jayanti. The Western Ghats and the Eastern Ghats mark the Western and Eastern agents of the Deccan Plateau respectively. Western Ghats lie parallel to the Western Coast, they are continuous and they can be crossed through passes only. Look at the Thal, Vod and Pal Ghats in the physical map of India. The Western Ghats are higher than the Eastern Ghats. Their average elevation is 900 to 600 meters and again 600 meters of the Eastern Ghats. The Eastern Ghats stretch from the Mahanadi Valley to the Nilgiris in the south. The Eastern Ghats are discontinuous and irregular and dissected by rivers draining into Bay Bengal. The Western Ghats cause orographic rain by facing the rain bearing most winds to rise along the western slopes of the Ghat. The Western Ghats are known by different local names. The height of the Western Ghats progressively increased from north to south. The highest peaks include Anaimudi and the Doda Beta. 
Mahendagiri is the highest peak in the Eastern Ghats. Shivra Hills and the Javadi Hills are located to the southeast of the Eastern Ghats. Look at the famous hill station of Udga Mandalam, popularly known as Uti and the Kutai Canal. One of the distinct features of the peninsular plateau is the black soil area, known as Deccan Trap. This is of volcanic origin, hence the rocks are igneous. Actually, these rocks have denuded over time and are responsible for the formation of black soil. The Rabali Hills lie on the western and northwest margin of the peninsular plateau. These are highly eroded hills and are founded on the broken hills. They extend from Gujarat to Delhi in the southwest northwest direction. The Indian Desert The Indian Desert lies toward the western margins of the Rabali Hills. It is an undulating sandy plains covered with sand dunes. The region receives very low rainfall below 150 mm per year. It is an arid climate with low vegetation over. Streams appear during the rainy season soon after they disappear into the sand as they do not have enough water to reach the sea. Luni is the only Raj river in this region. Burchans cover large areas but longitudinal dunes become more prominent near the Indo-Pakistan boundary. If you visit Jaisalmer, you may go to see a group of Burchans. The Coastal Plains The peninsula plateau is flanked by a stretch of narrow coastal streams running along the Arabian Sea on the west and the Bay of Bengal on the east. The western coast sandwiched between the western Ghats and the Arabian Sea. It is a narrow plain. It consists of three sections. The northern part of the co coast is called the Konkan, Mumbai, Goa. The central stage is called the Kannad Plain while the southern stage is referred to as Malabar Coast. The plains along the Bay of Bengal are wide and level. In the northern part, it is referred to as Northern Sarkar while the southern part is known as Kodomandal Coast. Large rivers such as Mahanadi, the Godavari, the Krishna, and the Kaveri have formed extensive delta on the coast. Lake Chilka is an important feature along the eastern coast. The islands. They have already seen that India has a vast mainland. Besides this, the country has two groups of islands. Can you identify these groups? Look at the Lakshadweep Island group lying close to the Malabar coast of Kerala. This group of islands is composed of small coral islands. Earlier, they were known as Lakshadweep, Minikoy, and Amindip. In 1970, these were named as Lakshadweep. It covers a small area of 32 square square kilometer. Kavarati Island is the administrative headquarters of Lakshadweep. This island group has great diversity of flora and fauna. The Pitti Island, which is uninhabited as a bird sanctuary. But you see the elongated chain of islands located in the Bay of Bengal extending from north to south. These are called Andaman and Nicobar Islands. They are bigger in size and more numerous and scattered. The entire group of islands is divided into two broad categories. The Andaman in the north and the Nicobar in the south. It is believed that these islands are an elevated portion of submarine mountains. These islands group are of great strategic importance of the country. There is great diversity of flora and fauna in the group of islands too. This island lies close to equator and experience equatorial climate and has thick forest cover.